historical beacon in the mother city. The Cape Town City Hall is well known for being the first place Nelson Mandela addressed South Africans after being released from prison in 1990. And now it'll play host once again, this time for the opening of Parliament after a devastating blaze gutted the National Assembly earlier this month. The work of the House will continue. Annika Larson is at City Hall today for the Mayor's handover to Parliament. We cross live to her now. Annika Larson, a veteran of what? 19 State of the Nations uh, addresses and uh, this will be the, fir the first time you see it at Cape Town City Hall. It's going to be uh, a sauna with a difference this year. That's right. Thank you for aging me like that, Taps. Always good to uh, have you there. <laughs> having my back as usual but uh, behind me we have the most beautiful uh, one of the most beautiful buildings I think in Cape Town built in 1905 uh, Cape Town City Hall and also uh, so historic because it's this balcony that you can see that uh, Nelson Mandela first addressed thousands of people uh, on the Cape Town Square uh, the Grand Parade and uh, after his release from Victor Fassier prison 27 years imprisonment and he started with the words comrades and fellow South Africans I greet you all in the name of peace, democracy, and freedom. And let's not forget those words. And also where the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu introduced the President Mandela after his election uh, in the National Assembly uh, to the people of South Africa as the first democratic president of South Africa. But there's going to be a historic handing over today uh, from the city of Cape Town to the Speaker Nosediwa Mapisa Nkakula of Parliament and the Chair of the National Council of Provinces, Amos Musondo, uh, with a key that is 150 years old and I have with me very patiently waiting the executive mayor of Cape Town Jordan Hill Lewis and I'm just going to mask up so that I could talk to him safely um, Mr. Mayor you like to be called Jordan I'm told so it's all right if we're informal here Absolutely. just tell me why uh, how this came about first of all after that devastating fire I think the whole city the whole country uh, watched in horror as it went up in flames it was an absolute tragedy, and as a former member of parliament until very recently, I felt that tragedy particularly personally. Uh, but in a time of national tragedy, I think it's important for us to come together as a country and do what we can, all of us, to help. And what we could do to help in the moment, it felt like a very important thing for us to say, uh, Cape Town is the historic home of parliament. There's no other place that should be the home of parliament. We love uh, parliament here. And so we made our facilities available, both the Civic Centre just behind us and the magnificent City Hall. And Parliament uh, thought about it and they came back to us and said they'd love to use City Hall for the State of the Nation. And we are absolutely privileged to be able to host it here. And so today we are handing over to them so that uh, it can be a very historic State of the Nation, the first one ever outside of the Parliament buildings. Uh, I was going to ask you, is this the first time, and you just answered that question, uh, why does there need to be an actual handover as such? Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't actually know this when, when we made the offer, but when the Speaker comes here and the Mace of Parliament comes here, this effectively is no longer the City Hall after today. This is the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. The building transfigures almost into Parliament, and so there does need to be an official handover. Uh, Parliament and the Speaker will be the custodian of this building for the next uh, week and a half. And so the, it's, a, it's a symbolic handing over of, of the key that you spoke about and of the mace of Parliament being brought to this building. And this becomes Parliament today. So in a way, uh, we are, I mean, we as a city are handing over to another arm of uh, of, of state, if you yes. like, because there are three arms of state, as we know, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary, and the state of the nation address is when those three arms come together. That's a very good point. Yes, I hadn't thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. Yes, and we are just, we regard it as an honor for Cape Town to be able to help in this time of tragedy, and we hope that uh, this is a memorable state of the nation, not just for its venue, but also there is such a sense of, of concern uh, in South Africa at the moment that also it is, a, in the wake of this tragedy, an opportunity to really bring the country together and inspire us about the future. Last question, I know you've got to run. Has it been an easy transfer and easy negotiation uh, <laughs> with a DA-led city and uh, a parliament that has uh, got an ANC majority in it, although it is, of course, an independent body? No, no, the, the discussions with Parliament itself have been absolutely easy. We, we've been on the same page the whole time. The only problem is the, 
you know, the police are very, very uh, kind of interfering, if I, if I can use that word. So we've set got in their ways. Set in their ways. We've got these lovely informal traders who make a living here on the Grand Parade, and they wanted them all cleared for two weeks. And we said, that's not going to happen, guys. We can't do that. This is their living. So we've come to a very good arrangement, and, and the, the kind of interference with their livelihoods will be much, much less, almost nothing. And so, uh, so we all came to agreement. But with the speaker and the speaker's team, no problem at all. Great. Thank you so much for being so patient, and it was lovely to chat to you. you and I think it's the first time we've spoken, so congratulations again you. on your appointment. Thank you so much. Sure.